Hey, story time friends. How are you today? Well, we are into spring and in celebration of spring, we are going to be talking about gardening today. Now, if you've watched my story times before, I'm Miss Lisa. I get to do story times at Worthington Park Library. And if you've watched my story times before, you might have seen a long, long time ago where I took you on a tour of my garden back when I was doing story times from my house. And I love to garden. It's one of my favorite things. So I had a really hard time narrowing it down to books today. I did. I have like 15 in front of me and I'm only going to read you three. I promise. We'll just do three. Okay. So let's go ahead and we'll get started with the more we get together. To do the more we get together, we're going to use a few signs. And the first sign we're going to use is the sign for more. You might have learned this one because sometimes it's handy when you're little and you don't have all your words yet and you want some more food especially. That's what my kids use a lot. All right, so the sign for more is that we're gonna have our fingertips just give each other kisses. More, good job. You don't have to make the sound, I just do that. All right, so we're gonna use the sign for more, the sign for together. Good job. And we're going to use the sign for happy. Good job. If you have real fast fingers, do you have fast fingers? How fast can I move? Ooh, okay. If you have really fast fingers and you want to try to fit friend in there, you can. Friend looks like this. We make two hooks and give a hug and give a hug. Are you ready? All right, let's give it a go. It is pretty early in the morning when I'm recording this, so this is going to be really low probably for most of the female caregivers. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Okay. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. When your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends, the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Good job! All right, did you see how fast it was when we got to the friends part? Whew, speedy. Like I said, we're going to be talking about gardening today, and we're going to start with our gardening theme with one of my favorite story people. Do you have favorite people in books? I have a lot of them, but one of them really high up on my list is my friend Lola. Have you met Lola before? All right, this is Lola Plants a Garden, and she is by Anna McQuinn with illustrations by Rosalind Beardshaw. And up at the front here, it has a poem about gardening. Now, this is a very old poem. So you might have heard this, but you might not have. It says, Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. Those are all flowers. Silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids are all flowers. All right. And this is from Charles Bridge Publishing House. Ready? Lola loves her book of garden poems. Her favorite poem is the one about Mary. Lola wants to plant a garden. Mommy said there is room near the vegetables. Oh, so they already have a garden. What season do you think it is out there? I think they might be dreaming of summer, but it looks like it's still maybe winter because there's not any leaves on that tree. Huh, I see maybe tiny little buds to get it started. So maybe it's the very, very beginning of spring. I don't know. Lola gets books out about gardens from the library. That's one of the reasons I love Lola. She loves to read. She chooses her favorite flowers from the books and mommy makes a list. So they're planning what they want their garden to look like. I do think it is still winter because look what Lola is wearing. She has a scarf on to keep warm and snow boots. They go to the garden store to buy seeds. Oh, have you gone to a garden store before? Oh boy, I get very excited at the garden store. There's so many fun things. Lola and mommy make the garden. The seed packets mark where the flowers are planted. So that's what they're using as markers. Lola will have to wait 
a long time for them to grow. She looks very patient though, doesn't she? Lola makes her own flower book while she waits. Mommy types the Mary Mary poem and Lola glues it in. Lola makes a string of bells. She finds shells and some old beads. She even makes a little Mary Mary. One day, guess what Lola sees? Tiny green shoots. That's when it's a little plant start. She pulls up weeds so the shoots can grow. Because guess what? The weeds will take all of the food out of the dirt for the, for the plants that you're trying to grow. Yeah. Lola's flowers grow bigger and they open to the sun. What season do you think Lola's in now? I bet it's summer. Mm -hmm. Look at those sunflowers. Daddy helps Lola hang her shiny bells and Lola finds Mary Mary a special spot. It is just perfect. Do you see Mary Mary on all the, in all the flowers? Pretty special, isn't it? That's a neat garden. Orla, Ben, and Ty are coming to see Lola's garden. Lola and Mommy make cupcakes. Yum! Lola wears her flower shirt, and Mommy helps Lola with her hair. Lola's friends love everything about her garden. They share the crunchy peas and sweet strawberries that Mommy grew. Then Lola makes up a story about Mary Mary. What kind of garden will Lola plant next? Do you have any guesses? What kind of garden would you plant if you could plant any kind of garden? We're going to talk about that a little bit more. If you do, we have a video of ideas you can try at home. Um, and if you do some of those, we're going to talk a little bit more about other types of gardens you could make. All right. I wanted to go back to here. Look what they're eating. Do you remember? They're eating... Oh, yummy peas and strawberries that her mommy grew. You know that? Those are two of my kids' favorite things that we grow in our garden. Yeah, they will eat all of the sugar snap peas before they even make it inside. And they eat all of the strawberries as soon as they are red. Yep, but those will grow pretty well here. All right, at the end, it says, Lola Lola Extraordinary, how does your garden grow? with flower seeds and shells and beads and happy friends all in a row. You did a great job with that story. I hope that you enjoyed it. I love talking about gardens, especially, you know my favorite time to think about gardens is in the winter when everything might be a little bit gray or just white with snow. And I love snow, but also sometimes I like to pretend it's almost gardening time because I love to play in my garden, I do. I spent part of the weekend making a huge spreadsheet on my computer with all of the seeds we have and what we're gonna grow, and it's very exciting to me. So I also really enjoy getting to garden with my kids, and so I hope that if you have a garden at your house, you help out with it a little bit, because it's really special time. All right, my next book, is about growing a garden in a place that doesn't look like you would normally think of for a garden. So usually with a garden, you might you might have a nice big backyard and you plant your garden out there. You might have a farm and you plant your garden there. But sometimes, if you watched um, our old Manhattan has some farms, um, you would see some different forms of urban gardening. And this one is called One Little Lot, the one, two, threes of an urban garden. And we're going to learn a little bit about growing a garden where there are lots of big buildings. All right. This is by Diane C. Mullen, and it's illustrated by Oriel Vidal. Ooh, that's very shiny. I'm going to have to be cautious so that you can actually see the pictures. Yeah. All right. This one is going to follow some very important people in the garden. And the people are not even people, even though the people are important to the garden. But there's somebody who's super, super important. All right. Whoop. One little lot, the one, two, threes of the urban garden. 
every day. The city is abuzz as silent strangers hurry by without a glance. They all look very busy, don't they? Some of them are wearing headphones and listening to music or maybe an audiobook. I don't want to assume. One little lot sits abandoned in the hustle and bustle. Hungry honeybees buzz about, searching for flowers to pollinate. You see the honeybees? Those, those are the super secret important things in the garden. Honeybees are very important. And do you see what's in that lot right now? I see a lot of trash. Yep, lots of trash. And some broken things. Yep. So they're searching for flowers to pollinate until two helping hands push open the ru rickety rusted fence. And a visitor imagines what it could be. What does it look like right now? It's a fair amount of trash, isn't it? Yep, and stuff that got thrown away. Maybe, just maybe, they all say. Hmm. So we did one empty lot, two helping hands. What's going to be next? Three long days are spent together, prodding, pulling, and preparing. Old tires and broken bicycles are rolled away. Empty bottles are bagged up. One little lot is ready for what's next. So we did one, two, three, four. Four planter boxes are installed in a straight, lovely line. Like magic, they are built from weathered wood and shiny screws. Hungry honeybees buzz about helping hands. Ooh. I like this one. This one's just like, I'm taking a, re a rest. I'm done for a little bit. Yeah. Do you know why they're doing planter boxes? Why are they building these rectangles? Oh, we did one, two, three, four, five. Five big bags of soil get emptied and edged into place. One little lot is rich with black gold. Worms wriggle around in this composted dirt. Be careful with the rakes. Oh, there's another superhero of the garden. What are those? Worms! Do you like worms? My kids love to rescue worms. Worms are such an important part of our garden. Anytime you want to grow something, you need worms and bees. They are very important. <clears throat> oh, we did one, two, three, four, five. I forgot to ask. What's next? Six! Six plentiful seed packets are opened and shared. Neighbors sit side by side and gently tuck each seed into its new home. Grow seeds, grow! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven showers pour over each sprouting seedling. Thousands of drops of water make the garden's journey possible. Soon, rangy roots begin to stretch down, down. Eight rows line each planter box. Lush leaves reach up, up toward the shimmering sun. Hungry honeybees buzz about, pollinating many flowers until nine prized plants burst into a bountiful beauty. Oh, beautiful bounty. I knew I was gonna do that. Neighbors pick beans, bok choy, carrots, kale, cucumbers, tomatoes, kitli, collard greens, and peppers. You know, there is only one of these that I have not grown in my garden, and that's kitli. I've never heard of that one, but all of the rest of them can grow in Ohio pretty well. So if you are local to me, so if you live in Ohio, you could probably grow all of those things. Beans love it here. Tomatoes love it here. They do really well. Oh, we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's going to be next? Ten new found 
friends clean and chop and peel. Together they cook and grill and saute. Hungry honeybees buzz above scrumptious smells until one little lot is full of delicious. Look at that. Can you see what it says on the sign? It says community dinner. All are welcome. So look at all of the work they put in and now they get to have a dinner with everybody that's worked on their garden. Every day the city is a buzz as busy gardeners make a beeline to their one little lot. Do you see where their little lot is? The city has more green now. Do you see it with its four beds? Yeah, right there, good job. And then at the end, the author talks about how important all of those parts of the garden are and her community garden that she built in her neighborhood. So let's talk about how you make a garden grow. What do you do? Do you remember in Lola, what did she start with? She made a plan and then she went to the garden store and bought seeds. And then they brought the seeds home and they just laid them on the countertop and it turned into a garden, right? No, you had to plant the seeds. You put them into the dirt, cover them. We call that tucking it into the flower bed. So we cover them up and then you have to water and make sure they get some sunshine. And the hardest part, you have to wait. That is the hardest part. And what we can't see is that seed is breaking open and growing roots down into the dirt. And those roots are taking all of the water that you pour down, like a drink, and then the roots are also collecting the vitamins from your garden dirt. Soil is garden dirt. Soil is what we put in to make sure that there are lots of vitamins for the plants. So did you know that our plants need food? They do. And they'll find that food in the soil. And worms help make more of that food. And then once your plants have grown up above where you can actually see them, then once they have flowers, the bees are gonna go from flower to flower and help them to grow into fruits. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do one more story, but first I wanna do a song because we did a lot of counting in our One Little Lot book. We're gonna go ahead and do One From The Left. Are you ready? This is a song by Jim Gill. He has said that we are welcome to use his stuff um, for story times, which is so generous. And I'm gonna do an acapella, so we'll see what happens. Are you ready? We're gonna put our hands behind our backs. All right. And we're gonna just pull up one finger. Ready? One from the left and one from the right. Met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called whoop doo doo Can you do that? Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those two. What comes after one? Two from the left and two from the right met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Snips Galore. Can you do like scissors? Then they said goodbye and walked away, those four. Now what's gonna happen after one, two? <clears throat> three from the left, and three from the right, met in the middle and dance all night. They made up a dance called a finger mix. It's a hard one. Can you mix your fingers together? Then they said goodbye and walked away. All how many? Six. Good job. <clears throat> we did three, now we're at four from the left and four from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Bend and Straight. Then they said goodbye and walked away, all eight. Good job. 
and wait a minute, we're almost out of fingers. How many are we gonna do this time? Five on each side, are you ready? Five from the left and five from the right. Met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called clap and clap and clap and clap again. Then I said goodbye and walked away. All ten. Good job. Did you run out of fingers? I did too. Yep, just have ten of them. <clears throat> all right. Sorry, I ran out of voice too. I don't know what happened there. All right, we're going to go ahead and do our last story for this story time. And this one, I love. There are so many good things you can learn in the garden. Like you can work on your math skills. There's a lot of science in the garden. And then this one talks about another thing we can learn in the garden, which is we can work on our colors. And this is by Christy Matheson. And this is The Hidden Rainbow. And it says, the bees need you to help this garden grow. All right, now we are, oh, this is from Green Willow Books, and Christy Matheson does books where I need your help. So I can't do this book all by myself. Are you able to help me? Okay, are you sure? All right. One little bee peeks out to see a world of gray and snow. She's looking for bright colors, and she needs you to help them grow. Are you ready to help? First, please brush the snow off the budding camellia trees. Can you help me? Can you brush it off? Yeah, you can brush toward whatever you're watching me on. Oh, look, the flowers are red and their nectar feeds one, two bees. Tickle the very tops of the growing tulip leaves. Can you tickle the very tops? See, the tulip leaves are right here. Can you tickle at the very top? Reach up high, up high. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Good job. Very soon the bees will find orange. And can you see one, two, three bees? Now let's point to the crocus shoots just beginning to sprout. Do you see the crocus shoots? These are the little, just point to them for me. Good job. <gasps> Four bees are eating pollen now that yellow has come out. Now it's time to search for a special four leaf clover. Do you see where the four leaf clover is? Did you find it? What luck, a field of green with five bees zooming over. Oh, please wave the bees back to their hive. Clouds are gathering for a shower. Can you wave the bees back? Go back, go back. <gasps> the bees don't like the rain, but it's important for the flowers. Blow the forget-me-not buds dry as the rain clears from the sky. Can you blow on the book for me? Oh, thank you. Oh, the sea or the sun is shining. Blue is blooming. I love forget-me-not. It's not big pretty. And six bees are buzzing by. Next, trace a line straight down the order orderly hyacinth row. Can you help me? We're gonna go straight down. Boop, boop. Hyacinth are also really beautiful. Look at this. Oh, seven bees are foraging in blooms of indigo. You're practically done. Now blow a kiss to the lovely lilac trees. The violet blossoms are brimming with nectar for eight bees. At last, get ready to find nine bees on the rainbow you grew. Look at that rainbow. But the story is not over. These bees have work to do. Can you see 10 humming bees getting busy in these trees? They're spreading so much pollen. You just might have to. Why 
are the bees spreading pollen? Do you know? So something you eat can grow. Thanks to the bees, soon you'll have your own delicious rainbow. Oh, what do you see? I see apples, peaches, pears. Oh, green apples, plums, blueberries, and blackberries. All delicious. I only grow one of those in my garden because I just have a tiny little garden. So I just have a couple of blueberry twigs. Yeah. And a grapevine, but that's not on here. All right. So do you see, how did she grow? She grew two gardens of rainbow, didn't she? Yeah, she grew all the flowers because that helps the bees to grow big and strong. And then she also grew those trees because the bees had plenty to eat and they were busy, busy, busy. Bees are so incredibly important to our garden. And I know that sometimes we can be a little bit scared of the bees because we don't want them to sting us, but they are really important. So we want to make sure that they have lots of food that they can eat, right? Because if they don't have food to eat, we don't have food to eat. A lot of our fruits and vegetables come from the help of bees. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some other books that I thought you might want to do, and then we'll do Tickle the Clouds real fast. Okay, ready? I, if you liked the idea of the community garden with the one little lot, you might also really enjoy Green Green, which is a community gardening story. It's really sweet. And the Bear's Garden which is the true story of a little garden in Brooklyn. Yeah. And then you also might like Grow, which is also about a community garden space. If you like imagining what your garden could be, you might really enjoy My Garden by Kevin Henkes because she doesn't just grow regular stuff. She imagines a world where the bunnies don't eat her food because the bunnies are chocolate bunnies. Yeah, so that one has lots of fun ideas for you. If um, you also might like, if you liked this rainbow story, the hidden rainbow, you might really enjoy planting a rainbow by Lois Ellert. Or if you like to think about making vegetables in your garden, which is what I like to grow, you might enjoy this one by Lois Ellert, which is an older one, growing vegetable soup, but it's still a really good one. Um, let's see if we're talking about our little helpers you might find in the garden. Dig In is all about worms, if you are looking for more information about worms. And helping to get those vegetable or those vitamins into the soil. This is called Compost Stew. It's an A to Z recipe for the earth. And then the last one that I had is one called In My Garden. And it's, this follows the garden all through the seasons. So kind of like, oh, one of our other books was a garden in, in the seasons. But, all right, and that's by Charlotte Zelato. And the illustrations are by Philip Stead, Steed, who does um, some of my favorites, like Amos McGee's Day, Takes a Sick Day or something like that. All right, that's all the books I have for you, including the many, many, many that I couldn't fit into reading today. Let's go ahead and do Tickle the Clouds. Ready? Can you show me your tickling fingers? Ready? And we're going to reach up high. Tickle the clouds and tickle your toes. Turn around and tickle your nose. Reach down low, reach up high. Story time's over. Let's wave goodbye. All right, friends, I have had so much fun with you. I hope that you enjoy growing a garden at your house or just growing a little bit of something. And I will See you soon. Please take care of each other. And remember, we miss seeing you.